Hello, buddy. We're, uh, welcome back to the channel. I've got my new friend Bruce here, and uh, I really like Bruce's shirt. It's a nice <laughs> shirt there. Where'd you get that shirt, Bruce? Uh, San Diego, I oh, believe. I'm okay. trying to remember where exactly, but... I can never find good shirts here. I'm always looking. <laughs> so, um, you're from San Diego, or...? That's right. San well, Diego, California. I lived in San Diego back in the 70s. Used to manage a hotel there called the Knox Hotel. It was uh, $25 a week. You can imagine what kind of hotel that was. <laughs> but you got, it got, you got a free apartment. That's why I took the job. Oh, okay. So it was a good deal having a free apartment. Was that off of one of your cruise ships? No, no, this is long before cruise ships. Oh, okay. I was like 21, 22, something like that. Oh. And I was back there again living there in the 80s. And I was artistic director of the Harlequin uh, Dinner Theater, which was on Harbor Boulevard. Did that for a couple of years. So uh, what did you do back in California? Well, I did a few things. I got there. What brought me there was the Navy. Oh, really? So I was in the Navy there for, what, almost four years, approximately. And then, uh, but I was transferred. So it wasn't mm. my, full, my full stay with the Navy. So. What did you do in the Navy? I did a few things. I flew search and rescue. I, I was an aircraft mechanic. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that go along with that, of course. You were on board the plane, but you weren't flying the plane. No, I didn't fly it technically, mm. no. Yeah. No, we were on a H-3 helicopter. Oh, nice. And I flew search and rescue uh, from that, basically out of the cargo door. Mm. They have you uh, sit there, and then, they, then you have another crewman that sends you when, when they're ready to drop you. Uh, mm to rescue somebody, you know, basically. Well, that sounds uh, exciting. Like I said, like some kind of drudgery work, you're out there doing what you're trained for, you know? Yeah. Sounds kind of exciting. Yeah, yeah, you're basically plane captain for, typically plane captain for right on a, on a carrier, right? Hmm. So, so as, as they're launching, the first thing that goes in the air is the helicopter, right? Hmm. And it flies off the starboard side of the ship while the aircraft are taking off and being launched. Hmm. So they're the first one up, last one back. <laughs> hmm. And so what was your motivation for joining the Navy? Um, well, first and foremost, I, didn't, I wanted to get away from a small town. I come from a small town in Minnesota. Hmm. And uh, I was ready to see the world, I think is the biggest thing hmm. for me. Uh, I needed a job. Yeah. And, um, and I didn't know exactly what I really wanted to do. You know? When was this, the 70s? Yeah, I graduated in 1979. Okay, yeah. And uh, as soon as I graduated, I was already working. I already had a job. So I worked the summer, basically, and then I went in in July. Yeah, I graduated in 74. And what a lot of people, the younger generation today, don't realize is back in the 70s, it was hard to get any job. Any job. You know, right. like, I remember a friend of mine got a job as a dishwasher at a Denny's restaurant, and we were... Wow, that's great! You got a job for a dollar thirty-five an hour, you know, and they made yeah. him cut his hair, you know. But um, and nowadays, you know, in America, everybody's hiring, you know, fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, right now, yeah, in America, right now, you can get. I mean, there's just jobs galore. It's just yeah. the opposite of the Philippines, right? Yeah. I mean, the Philippines they don't have any jobs here in the United States. They can't find enough workers. Right. They said they've they've quoted basically. If everybody that's on unemployment, not everybody that's unemployed, yeah. but that's on unemployment that actually went back to work and got a job, there would still be a lot of jobs available. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So what career did you get into after the Navy? I, uh, I, had been, I got involved with a lady uh, long term mm -hmm. uh, when I first met her, when yeah. first got there. So we'd already been together for a few years and I wanted to basically go and work at an airline, right? And mm -hmm. I had three airlines I had picked out, and they were all not in San Diego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there, none of them really are based out of San Diego at that, well, I think there's one, PSA or something like that was based out of it. But it's a small airline, right? So I wanted to either go to one of the three, and I offered those three cities to her, and she said no, she mm -hmm. didn't want to move. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, well, then I guess I'm going to work here in San Diego, mm. so I need to find a job here, right? Mm. Uh, so I uh, basically delivered paint. That was the first job I had. Mm. 
And then, the, then I found another job actually working in air, uh, on aircraft, building aircraft, uh, right there in San Diego. It sounds like a good job. Yeah, it, was, it, it didn't pay that well. Mm. I mean, it was okay, it just wasn't paying that well. Mm. Um, but it was something I was, conf you know, used to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was, in, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. And mm. I, yeah, so it wasn't that bad. And that's what you retired from? No. I actually injured my neck when I was 30 years of age. Mm. Excuse me. Mm. 30 years of age, and uh, I was up skiing. I got hit by a ski lift. Mm. So when I got hit by the ski lift, it injured my uh, neck. I didn't know it mm. at the time, of course. And uh, once I injured my neck, I went back to work, and I couldn't work over my head because mm. it was a lot of overhead work. You know, working with tools that yeah. are 15 pounds, you know, all day long. I couldn't do that type of work over my head anymore. So mm. I had to change careers. Uh, so that's what I did. I changed careers and I w chose to go into computers. No, oh, so good that's, choice. that's what I retired from. Mm. Uh, software support mm. and uh, yeah, basically software support for the for a company in San Diego. So you're one of those guys that knows his way around a computer pretty easily? I mean, things have changed a lot since I retired. I retired very uh, early uh, compared to most people. How old were you when you retired? 55. That is young, wow. Yeah. So I, yeah, I retired. I didn't know I was retiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even to this day, I think if people ask me, are, are you retired? I'm like, well, define retirement. Yeah. Um, will I ever go back to work? I don't know. I might, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's possible if I get bored or, you know, right? So... Technically, I would say I'm retired. Oh, you know, in this day and age, there's so many things you can do online to make money. I know a lot of guys that make a little extra money doing different things right. online, depending on their skill set. Right. You know, digital nomads. I think pretty much everybody does something. Usually. Yeah. You, most people do that. I find. Hmm. Just like you, you, you yeah. do YouTube, so you're still doing something. Yeah. Well, I came here to tutor in English and ended up doing YouTube. So exactly. So. Yeah. So and you see that same thing in the United, especially in the United States, right? Because mm. people need to pick up a little bit of extra money, because things are getting more expensive, right? Right. So, and nothing's going down in value that I know of, really. So, so what was your motivation for coming to the Philippines? Like, how'd that come about? The motivation to come to the Philippines, I lost my wife about two, a little over two and a half years or something like that now, three years mm. coming up, I guess. Um, she from brain cancer. Oh gosh! So once I lost her, of course I would never have thought of coming to the Philippines right. if we were together. Still, yeah, of course not. I'd yeah. still be in San Diego, living in San Diego, and uh, I still have a home there. Mm -hmm. So I would still be there, um, and we'd be still plugging along. You know. Yeah. Um, but bottom line is, once I lost her, and I provided, uh, and I helped her. I was, I, was, I was unemployed at the time, I wasn't working, so I was able to assist her through her, you know, the yeah. issue that she was having, which is brain cancer, and so I could, I could help her. I was, that must have been tough. It is, it is, but you know what, I'm glad I was able to do it. So, yeah. I mean, it really was. Uh, and, but yeah, you're right, it is tough to watch mm. somebody deteriorate like that. Um, it is, it's just mm. tough. I'm not the only one that obviously has had to do, deal with that. But bottom line is, after I lost her, a couple of years later, I was first, I was thinking, what do I want to do? Right mm. now, you got to change your whole life basically mm. again. So I was like, what do I want to do next? And I started thinking about it, and I'm like, well, I don't want to end up in a nursing home. So no. that that's really where my motivation. That's when my brain started you know, working on the problem of how do I solve that issue in the United States. I'm not saying I will end up in a nursing home. I haven't even looked at the odds on that, to be honest with you. I don't know if you've ever looked it up. I know that you have to basically, they have to give up all your money and everything you've got and you're basically broke. And um, then it's like, you know, people that are working minimum wage, taking care of you, deciding what you eat and when you eat and what you do. and. You know, basically, you're treating you like a child. They're running your life. Yeah, basically. they're running your life. You know, and uh, I would never want. I would rather be dead. 
Yeah. And that's uh, the thing about the Philippines, and you probably came to the same conclusion, is that over here, you could hire a real geriatric nurse right. to look after you, to live with, to be a live-in caretaker right. for, say, $500 a month. And she would look after you, and then you'd have also your wife and girlfriend, you know, helping you with, you know, cooking and cleaning and everyday right. chores and stuff. And you have be in control of your whole life, you know, up until the still, very end. Still, yeah, yeah, or as much as you can be in control. And these would right. be these would be people who care about you. They want you to do well, exactly. you know. Exactly. And they become your friends, you know, and you know have a relationship with them. Yeah. And it's a whole different thing. I see guys all the time. They're very feeble now. Some of them have diseases. Some of them are just old. May, maybe have Alzheimer's, whatever. But I see them around town and this person who's looking after him sometimes it's a it's a guy sometimes it's a woman um is a caretaker and they bring them to like here for coffee and they have their coffee they take them out for lunch sometimes they even see them in the evening at the red table in valencia having a couple of beers with their friends you know and then they take them home and they've got a life right, right. you know which would they wouldn't have at their home difference huge difference plus their money goes so much further they're actually moving. Yeah, they're moving. They're moving from here to wherever they're living. You know, they're going out. Yeah, they're going that out. That doesn't happen usually in these homes. And right? they have friends that visit them, that care about them. That's you know? another thing, visitations. Yeah. I mean, some of these people, the family does care about them. I, don't, I wouldn't think they don't care about them. But they just don't, I guess they don't think about it. You know, they don't really go... Oh, I should go over and see my dad, or I yeah. should go. It's kind of an couple. afterthought, and a lot yeah, of them have obligation. children. It's an obligation. Yeah, they have children and yeah. whatnot, and they, you know, they don't want to bring the kids there. You know, things like that sometimes happen. So they go but, over and they sit by the bed for like you know ten minutes, and, and they, then yeah, they talk. I gotta go. I gotta yeah. get going. Yeah, nothing. They, they got their own life. You know, yeah, they got their own life. But anyway, so I mean, I've seen it. You know, I'm old enough to have seen. Uh, you know, I got to see Doreen's dad live in a you know live in one of these places and he had a good pension a couple mm. of pensions actually mm. so he he was doing very well actually he made more money than us the two of us when we were working wow on, on when he was on you know when because he retired from the military he also retired as a teacher mm. in california teacher so he had both those pensions plus he had money that he had saved yeah so he was he was doing very well and he was you know, like you said, all the money goes to this this place. Mm. And uh, I have a home, like I said, uh, in San Diego. And, of course, I have uh, savings. And, of course, I, I got, you know, Social Security. I don't have a pension. But my concern is, just like you were saying earlier, that I really don't want to give all my money to one of these places. Yeah. That's not something I would like to do. And I'm not saying, you know, the, 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 it always goes back, well, Bruce, you might not end up in a home. That's true. And, uh, you have any the, children? Yes, I have one son. That's what I was going to get to. Mm. Uh, that I want to actually give, if I can get away with it, my plan is to, if I was going to come to the Philippines, mm. my general plan, mm -hmm. if I was to, if the Philippines becomes where I end up. Yeah. Which is poss a good possibility, right? Mm -hmm. If I come here, I'll rent my home, yeah. and I'll use that income also, and that'll boost my income by quite a bit. Oh yeah. I mean, it'll like more than double my probably my income. And living here, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like no problem at all. Yeah. I mean, I could hire a nurse, like you said, even if I don't have a girlfriend or a wife. Yep. Yeah. I could hire a, a full time nurse. We had a caretake, caretaker, you know, just cleans the house, cooks for you, shopping, and so you do all laundry, for all that me stuff. That I you know? can't do. Yeah, or I don't want. But you don't to want do. to do, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that. Yeah, so that's what I would do, and um, and then that way, when if I pass away, well, when, when I pass away, I mm -hmm. should say, right, my son can inherit my home, yeah, which are very expensive in San Diego. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a very expensive part of the country, and. Uh, if he just chooses to live there, yeah. he has a. It's going to be a very helpful for him in his life. Mm. Instead of giving, like you said, selling the home, giving away the money. Basically, it's the way I look at it. Almost giving away the money. I'm not sure how it works. But my understanding is like, let's say you have two guys. You know, one of them is someone like you who's got assets and savings, and he goes into a nursing home. There's another guy who's got who's basically broke. He goes to the nursing home. They're both going to get basically the same care. The difference is they're going to take. You're going to have to give up all your money 
you know, paying like, you know, four thousand, five thousand dollars a month or more or more, yeah. you know, until you're broke. And then they start covering the government covers, I guess. But uh, I don't know how it works after that, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I don't know if they make you move from that, you know, because you can't afford it now. Yeah. They make you move to a, a one that a government would subsidize or yeah. whatever, like yeah. you said, the state, right? The state of California, whatever state you're in. Um, but you're right. I mean, what kind that, of life is that? You know, sitting around there watching, you know, it, cable TV and, you know, I mean, geez. It makes me, that's my motivation. That's to answer your question to why am I motivated to leave the United States, mm. technically, yeah. right? And find another option in my life uh, and to live there mm. and, and to hopefully have, you know, we're all, what are, we, what are we looking for? Happiness in our mm. life. We're looking for something that we're happy with. We're, we're enjoying our life. Um, so. Well, I talk about a lot of times is friendship, too. And, like, I don't know how many friends you had back in San Diego. That's but, all part of it, right? Yeah. But here it's like, you know, I've got so many friends, I can't keep track of them all. I new ones every day. And, uh, of course, my channel helps with that a lot, too. But most of the guys that are here today in this coffee shop have made all kinds of new friends. And they have, like, you're inviting to weddings and birthday parties and barbecues and all kinds of right. stuff. And little side trips and stuff. And a lot so, of outings, right? Yeah, all kinds of outings. And you find yourself having... You know, say, are you going to get bored? It's just the opposite. You have so many options of things to do. Like you wake up and say, oh, I, I got to choose this or this or this today. A bigger social life. Yeah, yeah, way better social life. You know, it's not costing you anything. It's not like, you know, real expensive. Even if you wanted to say you're a golfer. I have never played golf in my life. But <laughs> if you play golf here, it's super cheap to play golf here. You know, compared to like in, you know, California. Oh, yeah. Well, everything's gone up there. I don't know if you, you, you might not be aware of exactly what's going on there. But I just came from there, obviously. Yeah. I mean, they've closed down golf courses, mainly because of watering. Yeah. Because the watering has cost them so much money to keep these golf courses green yeah. and, and, and maintain them that they've actually closed them down, especially during the pandemic. That's kind of where it all kind yeah. of started, uh, uh, trying to trickle down from there. Mm. And I don't know how many have closed, but a few of them have closed. That or they have to raise the rates, but if they raise the rates, then what happens? You know, mm. uh, how many more golfers are you going to have? Yeah. You know, can they actually afford to keep it open? Mm. So they've actually sold them. They, you know, these guys have said, well, you know, I have all this land. A developer wants X amount, right? So mm. I'm better off selling it to the developer, mm. you know. But anyway, yeah, golfing. So golfing has gotten really expensive in San Diego. Um, I'm not a golfer. Yeah, so I, I don't have to worry about it. Um, the only time I've ever golfed is when a family member has said, let's go golfing. I say, okay, yeah. <laughs> can I use your golf club? <laughs> <laughs> so when do you think you'll make the decision? You're just here kind final, of final decision? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, You've been here for a few months, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah I got here. Yeah, I've been here since February. Mm -hmm. I think it's February 8th, the day I got mm -hmm. here. And... Um, I'm going to be here, I've been here for, by the time I get out of here, it's going to be over three months. It's, going to, it's quite a while. I didn't expect to be here that long. Yeah. My expectation was two months. I, that was my expectation. Yeah. I thought a month in Thailand, because we didn't mention that earlier, but yeah. I'll, I'll mention it now. I stayed in Thailand for a month, and, uh, and that was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being in Thailand. And then I came back to the Phil I flew into the Philippines, went to Thailand for a month, basically. Mm. I spent a week in uh, Manila, and then I went to Thailand. But I spent a month in Thailand, and then I came back to the Philippines, and um, so together, the, that, you have to add that into the three months. Mm. But I'll be probably almost four months by the time I go back. I did not expect that. I thought one month in Thailand, one month in the Philippines. I thought, that's what I thought, and I'd go back. Yeah. But I did the uh, throwaway ticket. Yeah, right? yeah. I knew that I didn't have a set date, mm. so why yeah. buy a round trip ticket? Mm. Um, I know some guys. What they do is they they go ahead and buy a full price ticket, mm -hmm. you know, return ticket. So when they get here, they just go ahead and get the refund it, so they don't have to pay anything. I know you can even do that. Huh. Yeah, so they buy a full, you know, one that you can get a full refund yeah. from. So they pay that amount. And then when they first get here, they go, no, I don't want it, and they refund them. 
And of course, I'm sure it takes a little time to get the money from the airlines, but... The throwaway ticket's easy, though. The throwaway I mean. ticket costs, what, 12 bucks or something? Yeah. I can't remember yeah. exactly how much it, I paid. But I've done a few of those. I did one for Thailand. Mm. I've done one for the Philippines, you know, twice now. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, I, the throwaway tickets works out really well, mm. so I don't waste mm. uh, any money, yeah. you know, for a round-trip ticket that I don't even know I'm going to be leaving then. Yeah, right. Um, I already extended just recently. I extended mm. here in Domaghetti. Uh, my, you know, I had to extend, obviously. Mm. Um, they go, 30 days is your first, your free, right, yeah. visa. And then you have the, tw then they go 29 days. I don't mm -hmm. know why it's 29, but mm. that's what you pay for. And that's what I'm on now, the 29 extension. Then I think that's like one month, two months, or six months. Right. Choices. So to answer your question, when am I going to make that decision? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to go back to the United States because I didn't, you know, there's a lot of things I yeah. have. I, there's no way I could not go back. Yeah. I mean, it would be very difficult not, you know, to do that. So I have a lot of loose ends, obviously, mm. uh, to take care of. I got a home that I get. I, I got some things I want to do to the mm. home uh, to prepare it if I'm going to rent it yeah. out. Even if I'm not going to rent it out, I still yeah. have things I got to take care of. Clean it out. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest things. Is yeah, that's the biggest all this thing. stuff that you collect over the years. Well, uh, I know how that is. You know, in a, especially in a marriage. Yeah. And uh, and that has not been done yet. Mm. So a lot of things like that has to be done. And uh, my son's still back there. He's I didn't mention that I, I, uh, that he's going to college still, and he might even decide to go for his master's possibly. So. Mm. He might be back there for another two years. So, things like that. There's just loose ends. You know, mm. I think people understand what that's about. Maybe it'll all make sense. You'll make the, the final decision once you're actually back there living that life again. Right. And you can, you know... I can really sit down and... Compare the two. Think about it. Exactly. Yeah, pros and cons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, that's one of the things I... I mean, I'm definitely thinking about it. When I first got here and going through some of the things we talked about earlier, but not on this video, um, was some of the health cons things that I had happened to me. I had, a, you know, that sty infection and whatnot, yeah. uh, and a, and a fever I had uh, while I was here, kind of, kind of put a damper on how I felt yeah. about being here. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, I come here and I got sick, yeah. you know, and I'm like. It, you, you know, it doesn't put a nice taste in your mouth, yeah. you know. Uh, but now that I've been, I haven't been sick for quite a while now, uh, and I've been enjoying and doing the things that we planned on doing while we're here, mm -hmm. um, that's improved my feelings about it. And getting to Domaghetti as a new, uh, as a, another new place, because mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, one of the places I thought about by your guys' videos, uh, different people from here, obviously, mm -hmm. doing videos or, you know, I obviously that's one of the reasons I'm even in Domaghetti. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't even know if I'd be in Domaghetti at all. Uh, well, same for me. I saw videos. That's why I came here too. I mean, seriously. I mean, I'd I'd be somewhere else probably in the yeah. Philippines for that matter. I wouldn't be in Domaghetti. I would have been in Thailand. I wouldn't have even come here. Yeah. Just stumble across a video and change my life. Yeah. I mean, Just it's totally, random. <laughs> I mean, when you have people doing these vlogs and you're watching them, you're like. Oh, I should check out Domaghetti. Yeah. Uh, so that's the reason I'm even here at all, mm. uh, in Domaghetti. Uh, at first, being in Domaghetti, I was like, no, I wasn't quite sure yeah. about it. But now the longer I'm here, I get a, I'm get feeling more comfortable. Right. I guess is the better way to say it. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's so hot, and uh, that's one of the things this I have. This is the hottest time of year, though, right now. It's like really... It'll get better. Yeah. And uh, so that that was probably one of my biggest issues, especially coming from San Diego. Yeah. San Diego's weather, as Oh, yeah, you know, beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. You know, coming from that type of weather to the Philippines is a big shock. Uh, one of the things that I always find interesting is when I'm watching some of these vi vlogs is Sometimes the interview doesn't ask where they come from in mm. the United States. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that doesn't come out directly. Right. And I'm and because you're like, oh, what do you think about the Philippines? And I'm like, where are they coming from? Yeah. And I could probably answer the question for him, 
Because if he comes from a cold climate, chances are he likes the Philippines mm. because it's nice and warm, right? And then mm. it's it's balmy. It's it's a well. There are high, higher elevation places. We were discussing this off camera yeah. that you know it's twenty degrees cooler there, maybe even more than that. You know, right. and you've like got Baguio, the view, yeah, like right. Baguio, and you got views of the mountains and everything, right. and a lot right. of expats living there, and you can be in the city and you know say half an hour, forty five minutes. So you know there are other options. You know. Right. If they, if the heat is heat bothers you that right. much, you know, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I, I haven't invested. I went up here to Valencia. Yeah, I lived up there for two years. Yeah. It's, the higher you go up, you go all the way up to Castro Falls. It's way cooler up there. I haven't been there. I, yeah, I just take that road and just keep going till it dead ends up there. It dead ends at Castro Falls, and there's some fancy houses up there. The oh, foreigners really? have built. Yeah, really nice houses. You know, mansions that they built up there, all by foreigners. So I'll be looking for probably a cooler environment. Yeah. Uh, possibly than Domaghetti. I'm not saying I'm throwing away Domaghetti as an option. I'm not. Uh, it's still an option for me. But I'm definitely going to investigate the cooler weather areas of the Philippines, uh, like Baguio. Yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely going to Baguio. I'm headed from here today. You know, you know this yeah. information. That I'm flying out of here to Cebu today, or tonight, actually. And uh, from Cebu, we'll sp I'll spend a, what, three or four days there, mm -hmm. and then I'm flying, flying, there's a direct flight, there's the only place that you can fly from, is from Cebu to Baguio, is from Cebu. Mm -hmm. I mean, well that sounds kind of silly, but you can't fly from yeah, Domaghetti no. directly to no. uh, Do uh, Baguio, yeah. and you can't do it from Manila either. Yeah. So, so that's why I'm doing the flight from Cebu directly to Baguio, then I don't have to deal with the uh, bus ride up there. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Otherwise, I would have to fly into Manila, of course, and then take the bus. Yeah. Not really. Well, I'd, I'd rather fly it in. I think you're doing everything the right way. You're taking your time, you know, you're comparing things. And, yeah. you know, you're, you're financially stable, which gives you the flexibility doing whatever the hell you want. And that, that's, that that's, a big, that's a big, you know, help right there. That helps a lot. And, uh, you know, it'll all fall in place for you. you know, and if the Philippines isn't right for you, there's lots of other countries too, you know, exactly. many, many places to go. Like and Thailand. When we yeah, like Thailand. Thailand. You know, you're a young, healthy guy. There's many places you can go. But anyway, I really appreciate you taking your time, Bruce, and sharing your interview. I know I had to push you to do this, but, <laughs> and I know you're hot up here. So thank you so much. And, it's uh, definitely warm. When you come back, you know, I hope you look me up, you know, and get together. <laughs> So All thanks, right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. We'll Peace, see you next guys. time. Peace. Bye.